uh, very fortunate to be a part of a club that we're in the uh, the top eight. So we're, we're still alive and fighting with um, a number of teams dropping out. So looking forward to the week ahead. All right, we'll get to the Rabbitohs very shortly. But how do you put a positive spin on not just yesterday, Madge, but the way the last month has gone for the Canberra Raiders and, and, and knowing that you have to find that positive to go up there and beat the Knights on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, one thing I do know about finals, Jimmy, is that uh, you've got to put yourself in a position to have a crack. Yep. And we've had really good passages of our play. Uh, look, I thought our first half on against Cronulla was a really strong half. And unfortunately for the incident there with Sebi uh, getting sent off, uh, you know, we're in a pretty good position to be able to try and take that game. So we've got to find that. Uh, and it's an 80-minute performance. And when you step into the finals, that's what it basically comes down to. It'll be moments uh, and, yeah, you have know, they've done all the hard work to give themselves the opportunity and now it's about going and taking it. And Look, we had a number of our younger players come into our team and I thought they performed really well. Uh, you know, we've had a few out, but uh, I guess everyone will be looking at us and thinking, well, we're not much chance. So um, we've got a, a good swing at it now. Uh, what's the messaging that you send down to a team when you go one man down? I don't know how much you've experienced that throughout your coaching career, Madge, but what, yeah. was, what was Ricky saying to elicit a response from that last 20 minutes? Yeah, the biggest part there, Jimmy, is obviously making sure that you can try and get a defensive line where people are, are comfortable because your back row that sits there in the in the middle in on either edge tends to probably find himself out in the centres. Like yep. if you're not carrying a, a back on the bench like we were, so we had to put Hudson Young out there on the, on the left edge. And really, it's just about working hard. I think there was a stat over the last couple of years, and it subtly changed that teams actually were defending better when they had 12 men because for whatever reasons they uh they rose and looked after their teammates but you know the the attack of how teams are breaking teams down now and teams practice against 12 men uh when you're attacking and also defensively yes where you can isolate that space of where that player was and uh you know unfortunately we got we got caught out there yesterday with uh, a man down and, and the other part about it too is the fact that of all the sides that you were man down one of those sides that are really good at f stripping numbers at yeah. a back end, are the, are the Cronulla Sharks? Yeah, the Sharkies, they, they're very much about finding a field position and then overloading one side, and they obviously were able to do that, um, you know, down our left edge. But, uh, look, you know, it was a real unfortunate one. It was a real, it was an accidental tackle. I mean, yep. Seb was very apologetic and very upset after the game about, obviously, the incident, because it's definitely not Sebi uh, in that situation. So... Look, uh, yeah, we're as as I've said, uh, yeah, we're we're fighting and we're alive. Uh, so we go up to Newcastle now on Sunday, and uh, it'll be a packed house. And looking forward to the challenge. There will be a change in the lineup, obviously, with uh, Sebastian out. We make a presumption he'll take an early guilty plea. That'll be five matches. Does this come into play too? The same thing we spoke about with Jared Warrior Hargreaves around availability for the Kiwis and whether he would have been selected. I know we've spoken about that over the course of the last couple of months, match. Yeah, Jimmy, it's, uh, it is unfortunate. I've obviously got a double whammy there from uh, Canberra New Zealand because um, Sebi was well and truly in contention of being the team. So uh, uh, we'll have to have a look at that and I'll have a chat with Seb obviously over the next couple of days uh, on where he, he stands. But look, you know, obviously the um, the charges come down and uh, they'll be discussing that um, at the Raiders at the moment about which way they go there. But uh, yeah, those games will come into um, uh, you know, contention as we move forward. Uh, the other thing about it... Uh a lot of people mention is you know back to the wall we can't win it mentality under siege mentality as has that been used by ricky to start this week knowing that as you say you're going up there to newcastle it's it's going to be a a fantastic atmosphere with another sold out crowd but it's a pretty formidable place to go at the moment oh well you gotta look forward to those games jimmy that's what it's all about isn't it yeah you fight all season to be able to put yourself into this situation and uh, into the finals and you know they've got an opportunity and um, as you just said, yeah, there's probably not a, a lot of people out there that would uh, look at us and um, think we're a chance in that space. So no doubt we'll we'll touch base on that. But you know, one thing we do know as a team is that if we play to our potential, that uh, yeah, we can come up with a half like we uh, had in that first half. And look, that that game could have gone. You know, Jordan missed the tackle. Uh, sorry, missed a try. Sorry, uh, yep. he jumped over Connor Tracy and he fumbled the ball. Zach Wolf had got across the line and. Uh, Sebi Chris went down the sideline and kicked it back in and unfortunately stood on the line. So if a little bit of that goes our way, then all of a sudden you can really put uh, the pressure on the opposition. And you know, in that game yesterday, uh, one of those tries come our way, all of a sudden it's a different ball game. 
How do you start thinking about the Round 22 clash? And I think Ricky Stewart mentioned in the press conference that you were bloody awful when the Knights came down there, 28 points to six at home. Do you take anything out of that? Is it just one of those ones where you push no. it to one side, forget about it? No, look, you push that aside now. Well, I mean, that's that's part of the, the season that's just finished. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as they say, you get into the final series, it's like starting a new season again because it's a fresh start and you've got eight teams. So um, those games, yeah, you know, we've taken plenty of thoughts from over the last uh, 27 rounds and now we uh, we find our best best footy. And, uh, yeah, I think we've got a team that can uh, yeah, go up and perform and um, go and have a real crack at it, as I've said. I'm going to ask Madge about all the teams that remain, get his thoughts on them. So we might as well start with the Knights, Madge. Um, let, we, we make yeah. that presumption that Caelan Ponger is going to play. We don't know how fit yeah. he's going to be, and no doubt he'd be a target anyway. But when you look at the Knights, the great momentum that they have, what do you, what do you see? What do you see as the strengths and what do you see as a, maybe some, some opportunities for the Raiders? Yeah, well, I can't give away too much, Jimmy, sure. to, uh, with all the listeners uh, at the other end. But, uh, oh, look, they're playing with great momentum at the moment and they're playing off the back of it and they're working hard for each other. So... Uh, yeah, we, we've got to match that and go above uh, when the time and the moments come. So, uh, look, we'll, we'll have a really good week's prep. We've got a bit of a, a longer turnaround, obviously playing on the Sunday now, and uh, it'll give us a good chance at you know coming up with how we want to play. And I think we'll have a real big focus on us, uh, Jimmy. Obviously, with uh, a number of the younger ones coming through and and the connections between each other. And as I said, I, I thought some of our younger boys performed really well for us um, yesterday afternoon. And it's about backing that up and and finding the moments when, they, when they're when they needed. And um, so, yeah, I think, you know, as you said, you've got an informed Carlin Ponger out the back there, which every team's uh, got to do their homework on the fullbacks there. We've got some very special fullbacks in the game at the moment uh, and the way they're playing. So we'll have to be very good there, Ryan Carlin. Yeah, it, it feels like, you know, one of the things about Carlin Ponger, we, you know, we see the highlights reel and it's, you know, look fantastic, especially down that left edge and the select passing yeah. and often it's him running and sometimes it's him him passing as well. I thought the kick reception in that second half against the Sharks when the game was in the balance and it was a staggered defensive line and then he got his way through and he made 60 metres and from that point on the game changed because uh, yeah. it, so, so even that – so. If you want to say, well, Carlin did really well there, but it all came on the back of a staggered kick defence yeah. from the Cronulla Sharks. So they're the they're the mm. things that you have to be on to get this win. Yeah, you're spot on, and that's what these games demand of you as a player. That every play matters. Yeah. Um, yeah. We against the Broncos, we we were in the game, uh, and you know, Reece Walsh use him as an example. Yep. Uh, there was a kick return that he came down our right edge, and we just missed him. And it was just a subtle, uh, our, our right edge wasn't quite connected. All of a sudden, boom, we're down the other end and all of a sudden we're battling. They're the moments now that you've got to be at your best uh, when you, you step into the finals arena to be able to take the game. Uh, and that's, what, that's what's so enjoyable about getting into the, into the final series, Jimmy, because you know, you, you've got to really draw upon that and you find out about individuals. And mate, you get it right on that game, on that 80 minutes, then you know what, you step through into the next week. And that's obviously what we're chasing. Uh, why don't we start there, Broncos? What are your thoughts on the Broncos? You, you could argue very strongly that they have the most talented roster in the National Rugby League. They've got a huge game against a bogey side to start the final series. Yeah. Yeah, well, they've definitely got a list of players there, Jimmy, but I guess time will tell. You know, that's... Uh, that's as I said, the, you're in the final series now and they've been able to form week in, week out to, to end up second, but they're playing against a pretty informed storm. And if Jerome Hughes is coming back into that lineup, which I would imagine he would, yep. uh, he's one of the best halves in the game. So it'll come down to the pressure game. I'm sure they'll come up with a plan against Rusey Walsh. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll make, basically suffocate his movements. Um, yeah, we all know what the Storm have been able to do over the years where they, they pick out a player. And I go back to 2009 when Jared Hayne was absolutely on fire. Uh, and they went into a, a grand final where they just devised a plan where any time that Jared Hayne got the ball, everyone had their momentum moving forward. And it just cut down his time. And that subtle change in the way they defended against Jared in that 209 grand final was the difference of taking him out of the game. And no doubt they'll probably come up with a, a plan around Reese Walsh. Yeah, they'll kick to a certain point. Uh, they'll make sure that 
you know, they find the, the point on the, the field that he hates bringing the ball back. Yep. And no doubt when he uh, brings it back, he'll probably get a little bit extra service in the, in the defensive side, uh, just to make sure that when he is running the ball, um, he's a little bit more fatigued because he's a tough kid. You can see that. Yes. But fatigue finds people. And if you isolate them enough, then that fatigue will uh, you know, put him out, out of the game. But in saying that, though, he's had some experience now at uh, the Origin Arena, being able to, you know, get beaten up by a New South Wales team, uh, return serve. So it's going to be a really interesting game, that one. Uh, that's, you know, that's, it's, this is the, the genius of, of Bellamy, right, which is I incredible. Like... Uh, I think the the other one was Tal Malolo was running for 300 metres, but he, yeah. he came up with yeah. a strategy to be able to limit his metres. We had Tom Trebojevic yeah. in his unbelievable season of 2020 or 2021 where he was able to shut him down in a semi-final series. Yeah. That that speaks well, to the, um, the, the Bellamy genius, yeah. Madge. And the big thing, they won't just focus around Reese Walsh, uh, Jimmy. They'll focus on their other players that are trying to find the quick play of the ball that allows... Adam Reynolds to square up and give Reese Walsh some space. So if they actually win the ground, slow the momentum down, all of a sudden Reese Walsh doesn't have the ability to skip to the outside like we've discussed yep. uh, on a number of our shows uh, chatting. And you know, I think that's the strategy that I'm sure that they'll come up with. But don't, um, I'm sure you'll see a pretty solid kick chase line going down on Reese Walsh and uh, he'll get a fair bit of treatment early days. Okay, is it Nick Meaney? Is it Ryan Pappenhausen? Is it Sua Falongo? Uh, I don't think yeah. it'd be the latter, but gee, yeah. wow, what a production yeah. line they got there, Madge. Yeah, they have. They've, they've produced some good fullbacks, and I think yeah, you know, the luxuries of having someone like Billy Slater in their uh, their coaching staff is very handy. Uh, he's produced a, a lot of good footballers over his time, Billy, uh, along with Craig. But oh, I think they'll go Nick Meaney, myself, Jimmy. Yeah. I, I think uh, the fact that you build habits throughout a season and. Uh, Pappenhausen, I reckon you might find him on the bench. I reckon to have an X factor like that coming off the bench. Uh, they they showed their hand a little bit last week where they put him in the middle uh, and played it yes. a subtle different style. So they'll be able to bring someone like that that could also speed things up. And if you lose a back, well, you've got Pappenhausen there that can uh, move into a space. And Nick Meaney too, uh, he's played in a number of positions. Yep. So Nick might be able to go and jump into the centres or have to play on the wing. And then you've got Pappenhausen that can come on as a fullback. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see both of those two in the team. What would you do with Nelson, Madge? Uh, look, I, I do like him in the middle. Just the fact that they've got two solid back rowers. Uh, Katoa, I really like Katoa. I think he's uh, yep. performing really well. And you know, big Nelson's played on the right edge. Um, so I think the fact that Nelson can come off the bench and basically blow a ruck apart. And, yeah, he, he definitely did that against us when we played them. Uh, yeah, he came yeah. on and he destroyed the ruck and then all of a sudden he shortens up your defensive line and then Jerome Hughes goes to work with uh, Munster. So it's not a bad spine off the back of Big Nels creating a bit of momentum once it's up and about. It's funny because we have Timmy Manor, who who I know you have a great friendship with when yeah, he works man, here. Jim. Yeah, he's, he says he looked at Nelson... As of a Solomona and said, "Right, I've got to retire. Like this is just this is just not fair." <laughs> and then I was listening to the Hello Sport Boys yesterday. Uh, they were having a conversation with Joy Arrow, and they just asked him the same thing. And he said, "No, Nelson, it's not fair that we have to tackle Nelson." But uh, well, which gives mate, you, I can tell you a funny story about Big Nelson there, Jimmy. I yeah. think we were at the World Cup, and uh, I picked Nelson in the back row to play against Ireland, and oh. uh, a good friend of mine, Luke Kiry, was playing opposite him, uh, and they didn't, they weren't aware that that was going to be the case. And I never forget him talking to me after the game and go, a few choice words were said uh, about <laughs> thanks very much for that big, you know what. It ran straight over the top of me a few times, but uh, yeah, old Luke Curie hung on there a few times. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a sight. Uh, unbelievable. All right, mate. Uh, if you want to ask Magic a question, we've already got questions coming in. Let us know. one 1170 Get us on that text line, 0457-736-736. The last one I want to ask you about uh, before we go to the break, the Warriors, which have, you know, yeah. they've just surprised everyone. We've just had Sammy from SENZ telling us that I think he's got 13 Warriors in his team of the year. But uh, yeah. what have you made of the Warriors and, and how do you see them progressing? Yeah, they've been great, haven't they? Um, it's exciting, obviously, from my point of view and seeing a number of uh, the boys that have been a part of the Kiwis playing in the team. And I think one thing for uh, the men over there is that it's like playing in a test match each week. You see the full crowds and yes. the atmosphere would be um, incredible to be playing in front of. But I just see the Panthers. You know, history comes back on itself with the way teams can defend and 
you look at the Panthers throughout the season, I mean, they've only conceded 55 tries. Like, that's one hell of a, an effort. And there was one of those games where they had quite a few because they rested a few players. Yeah. But then you look at the Warriors, they've had 77 tries across the season. And uh, history tends to tell us that, you know, you've got to be um, pretty strong defensively. But also, too, on the flip side with their attack, they've actually scored 645 points across the season, 572. So it's going to be one hell of a game of how you see Sean Johnson and Wade Egan break down the potential opportunities um, in the Panthers because there's not, not many holes that you can actually look at uh, to be able to create it. So it's going to come back to a, just a, I reckon a kicking duel between Sean Johnson and Nath Cleary finding field positions yep. and then basically going set for set and seeing who's willing to go the distance and then seeing who cracks. Do we have a little preview there? Kangaroos halfback up against the Kiwis halfback? Oh, you never know, mate. You never know. So uh, <laughs> I'll talk to Sean down the track, but uh, I'll just let him really focus on what they're trying to do over there and you know, take the opportunities that they've created throughout. Uh, obviously, what's been a really tough few years for them. Uh, yeah. um, but now to go over there and you know, bounce... Uh, the way they have been. It's uh, it's nice to watch and it's great for the game. Yeah, but remind the listeners what he said to you when you rang him about missing out on the Rugby League World Cup squad last year. Yeah, he was, pretty, he was pretty keen to have another go at it. So yeah. uh, I'll um, I'll chat to Sean in time and uh, you know, he's, uh, I've got a good relationship there with him about where he's at with his career and he's not a pup anymore. So he, no. uh, he understands that his body's uh, got to keep going and he, he wants to go on again next year. So uh, we'll have a chat when the time's right. But I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but by any measure, based on what Sean Johnson did over the last two years in the lead up to this year, if he'd have said that to anyone, they would have thought he's delusional. And yet this year, yeah. he he's in the running for the Dally M. Yeah, which goes to show, I mean, he's, over the years, he's always shown that, Jimmy, that he, he could potentially have a breakout. And he's probably always found the, the differences of consistency and uh, whether it was injury uh, in and out of his game. But it just goes to show what happens when you're happy at home and you, you're settled. Yep. Uh, and there's a bit of momentum behind the organisation that he once loved. You know, he's, he's always stated that, that he loved his time there at the Warriors and, you know, being in New Zealand. So uh, it'll be um, a really interesting game, this one, against the Panthers. So it'll be a set for set and it might just come down to one or two moments. Zero four five seven seven three six seven three six. Madge on a Monday. It's all thanks to Finch Financial. Remember, it's asset finance made simple. Check them out online, finchfinancial.com.au right now. We'll take a break, Madge, and then we're back with more. Stick around.